Good day again, mga kapilo. This day, we will have another philosophical coffee session and we will discuss about justice and fairness. So this is actually chapter uh, four, topic three of our module in ethics. So hindi lang ito na ihabol noong midterm period nyo, but uh, uh, unfortunately, nagkaroon tayo ng limited na time noon. But now, ihahabol natin ito and hopefully, matapos natin at may, matapos natin yung buong discussion natin sa ethics. So let me just share my screen in order for us to start. Okay. So justice and fairness. We promote the common good. So arguments about justice and fairness have a long tradition in Western civilization. In fact, no idea in Western civilization has been more consistently linked to ethics and morality than the idea of justice. From the Republic written by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato to a theory of justice written by the contemporary philosopher John Rawls, every major work on ethics has held that justice is part of the central core of morality. Now, justice means giving each person what he or she deserves. Ito yung pagbibigay ng kung ano yung nararapat sa isang tao. In a more traditional way, it is giving each person his or her due. Okay? Due. Kung ano yung dapat na ibibigay mo sa isang tao. When a person deserves respect, then you give him respect. When a person deserves love, you give him love because that is justice or yun yung just na dapat na ginagawa. Again, justice means giving each person what he or she deserves. Now, justice and fairness are closely related terms that are often today used interchangeably. So napagbabaliktad natin yung paggamit natin sa justice and fairness. Pwede natin sabihin na justice is fairness and fairness is justice. There have also been more distinct understandings of the two terms. While justice usually has been used with reference to a standard of rightness, fairness often has been used with regard to an ability to judge without reference to one's feelings or interests. So, uh, itong fairness is something to do with impartiality. So, we already have discussed impartiality sa nakaraang mga discussions natin na kung saan wala kang kinikilingan, wala kang prenoprotect na, nasa gitna ka lamang, neutral ka lamang. So, that is fairness. When you practice that kind of uh, fairness or that kind of neutrality that is expected on you, then you are a just person who practices or who exemplifies justice. Now, when decisions have to be made about, uh, about how benefits and burdens should be distributed among a group of people, questions of justice or fairness in e inevitably arise. In fact, most ethicists today hold the view that there would be no point of talking about justice or fairness if it were not for the conflicts of interest that are created when goods and services are limited and people differ over who should get what. So ano nga ba yung marireceive ng bawat isa? When such conflicts arise in our society, we need principles of justice that we can all accept as reasonable and fair standards for determining what people deserve. So what people deserve to receive, kung ano nga ba talaga yung para sa kanila at para sa ating lahat. Now to continue, but saying that justice is giving each person what he or she deserves does not take us very far. How do we determine what people deserve in the first place? 
Ano nga ba yung para sa bawat isa? Ang kay Juan ba ay para kay Pedro? Ang kay Pedro ba, ganun din dapat ay kay Jose? O ganun din dapat ang kay Juan? So what criteria and what principles should we use to determine what is due to this or to that person? So ano ba yung criteria na gagamitin natin para malalaman natin ngayon kung ano yung nararapat para kay Juan, para kay Pedro, para kay Jose, para kay Cordapio, para kay Cordapia, at sa ating lahat. So to continue, we discuss the principles of justice. So the most fundamental principle of justice, one that has been widely accepted since it was first defined by Aristotle, is the principle that equals should be treated equally and unequals unequally. Again, equals should be treated equally and unequals unequally. Siyempre, di ba? Kapag equal, equal tayong tao, we should be treated the same. Ako, tao, akong itatrato mo, tao din kitang itatrato. So the other person should treat us as a co-equal being. So we should be treated equally. Pero hindi pwedeng itatrato For example, na tayo ay kaparehas sa isang unequal being natin. For example, ang aso o ang halaman, alangan namang mas pahahalagaan pa ng isang tao yung kanyang aso o yung kanyang halaman sa kapwa niya tao. So that would be unfair, that would be unjust because equals should be treated equally and unequals should be treated unequally. In its contemporary form, this principle is sometimes expressed as follows. Individuals should be treated the same unless they differ in ways that are relevant to the situation in which they are involved. Now, to give you an example, si Tom and si Jerry, yan, they, they, they have the same work as janitors in a company. And there are no relevant differences in the work they are doing. Ang winawalis ni, ni, ni Tom, ganun din ang winawalis ni Jerry. Ang winawalis ni Jerry, ganun din naman kay Tom. Ang trabaho nila, parehas na parehas. Janitor sila parehas. Now, justice requires that they should be paid the same wages and they should receive the same benefits. Okay. Kung 5,000 ang nare-receive ni Tom, dapat 5,000 din ang nare-receive ni Jerry as basic wage. Kung 10,000 yung benefits na nare-receive ni Tom, ganun din dapat ang marireceive ni Jerry. So, all in all, they should be compensated for 15,000 pesos. The same, ha? walang pagkakaiba. Why? Because they have the same work. So, they should have the same salary and the same benefit. Now, if Tom, for example, is paid and given benefits more than Jerry simply because he is straight, while the latter is a homosexual, or because he is a high school graduate while the latter is an elementary graduate, then we have an injustice, a form of discrimination because sexual orientation or educational qualifications are not relevant to Tom and Jerry's normal work situations. Not because straight itong si Tom, mas mataas ang sweldo niya kaysa kay Jerry kasi malam niya si Jerry kasi si Jerry lalambot-lambot. Not because high school graduate si Tom eh, mas mataas na siya dun sa elementary graduate lang na si Jerry. Not because they differ when it comes to sexual orientation and when it comes to educational qualification means na dapat itatato mo na mas mataas yung isa kaysa sa, sa isa. So that would be unfair. So that would be unjust. So the principles of justice or the principle of justice will not be observed in this situation. So dapat pantay lang. Kung anong nare-receive ni Tom, ganun din ang marireceive ni Jerry because they have the same kind of work and uh, they are both janitors. Okay? Unless other circumstances will uh, will be present. For example, mas matagal naman si Tom kaysa kay Jerry sa kanilang serbisyo na kahit parehas sila ng tinatrabaho, kung si Tom ay 10 years na at si Jerry isang taon pa lang, it would be unfair naman kung mas mataas ang sweldo ni Jerry kaysa kay Tom. So it can be fair or it may be fair kung mas mataas na ang sweldo ni Tom kaysa kay Jerry kahit parehas silang janitor if circumstances will say na si Tom mas matagal na siya sa serbisyo. 
Okay, that would be a different story na ha. So the principle of justice will also apply to that. So just lang, mas tama lang naman na mas mataas ang marireceive nung isa kung mas matagal na siya. Okay? Okay, so continue. There are however many, many differences that we deem as justifiable criteria for treating people differently. For examples, or these are the many examples that I have uh, uh, written in your module. So we think it is fair and just when a parent gives his own children more attention and care in his private affairs than he gives the children of, of others. Malamang, magulang yan. Kung ikaw ay isang magulang, mas pahahalagaan mo yung anak mo kumpara sa mga bata na hindi mo naman kaano-ano. Bakit mo naman bibigyan ng pera o aarugain ng isang bata o hindi mo naman kaano-ano samantalang yung anak mo hindi mo naman nabibigyan ng pangangailangan niya. So, principle of justice will say na dapat uh, na mas pahalagaan mo lang ito kumpara sa iba. Okay, kasi sa yan. Now, another one. We think it is fair when the person who is first in a line at a theater is given first choice of theater tickets. Ito yung sinasabi ng first come, first serve. Siyempre, nauna siya sa linya. Alam nga naman yung nasa gitna ang uuna, yun yung nasa dulo. So, principle of justice will tell you that kung sino ang nauna, siya ang una nga si kasuhin. Uh, Di ba? So, pila, pila yan, may pila. Hindi rin dapat pwedeng sumisigit because there will be injustice if that happens. Another example, we think it is just when the government gives benefits to the needy that it is just uh, uh, that it does not provide to more affluent citizens. Sino nga ba yung mas may nangangailangan ng tulong? Siyempre, yung mga na, nasa baba, yung mga nasa laylayan. Hindi mo naman i-expect, for example, na kung binigyan ng ayuda yung mga nasa, nakatira sa uh, sa mga lugar na kung saan, sabi mo na lang nababaha, ay ganun din ang ayuda na ibibigay doon sa mga hindi nabaha. So magiging unfair naman na yun. So unless the government has the capacity to do so na pantay-pantayin na ibigay yung mga pangangailangan ng mga constituents niya. Pero ang mga dapat na mauunang matutulungan ay yung mga nangangailangan at hindi yung mga hindi naman talaga nila kailangan. May mga iba naman na kapag binibigyan sila ng ayuda, for example, sinasabi nila ibigay na lang nila sa mas nangangailangan. Okay. Now, we think it is just when some who have done wrong are given punishments that are not meted out to others who have done nothing wrong. Alam nga naman na paparusaan mo wala namang ginagawa. It is just to give punishment or to render punishment dun sa isang tao o sa isang grupo ng tao na nagkasala, nagnakaw, pumatay ng tao, nanggahasa, um, nanunog, uh, bumangga, uh, pumatay ng, ng ibang tao. So yan, bigyan mo ng punishment na yan. Yung walang ginagawa, huwag mo, lang, huwag mo lang bibigyan ng punishment kasi walang ang ginagawa. Okay? Now, another example or last example that I will give you. We think it is fair when those who exert more effort or who make a greater contribution to a project receive more benefits from the project than others. Okay? Siyempre, kung sino man yung mas naghirap, siya yung dapat mag-benefit sa isang proyekto. Uh, example na lang natin yung mga thesis. No? Sa college, may thesis writing. Hindi naman, sa, kapag grupo yan, hindi naman lahat yan gumagawa. Yung iba dyan, sabit lang. O, awit sa inyo ay eh, mga sabit. O, diba? Yung iba, wala talaga. As in, walang ginagawa. <laughs> Nakalagay lang yung pangalan nila doon. So it would be unjust kung bibigyan mo ng 90% lahat yan na sa pasa. O pare-pareha silang 90%. Magre-reklamo dyan yung gumagawa, sir, bakit naman ako 90 din ng grade ko yung hindi gumagawa, 90 ang ginagawa, ang ibibigay. Naintindihan na, na, nyo, class? Ganun siya. Ganun siya nag-work. Or another thing, uh, gusto niya naman siguro mabigyan kayo ng matataas na grades, right? Now, I gave, for example, lang, bigyan ako ng 95 na grades sa lahat sa, inin, sa inyo. 
flat 95. Lahat, as in lahat. Kahit yung mga hindi nagpe-perform, kahit yung hindi nagsasubmit ng mga requirements. What will the 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 the, the majority of you na nagsasubmit ng mga requirements na talaga nagko-comply sa mga requirements? Ang mara, anong mararamdaman ninyo? So it would be unjust, unfair naman si Sir. Kasi ako 95 ako ginawa ko naman yung lahat yung isa 95 ang 95 pa rin na binigay niya wala namang ginawa wala namang sinabi nag-high lang nagsumama lang sa GC na may 95 na grade so it would be unfair so principle of justice will tell me dapat hindi pantay-pantay ang ibibigay ko sa inyo na grado kasi hindi naman kay pantay-pantay ng performance na ginawa sa klase ko okay so meron na akong basehan itong principles of justice o itong principle of justice now on the other hand There are also criteria that we believe are not justifiable grounds for giving people different treatment. In the workplace, for example, we generally hold that it is unjust to give individuals special treatment on the basis of age, sex, race, or their religious preferences. Not because mas matanda, eh, mas bibigyan mo ng preference. Not because babae, eh, mas tinutulungan mo, eh, mas mga iba nga, kaila, mga lalaki, kailangan din naman nila ng tulong. Or not because Filipino siya or Amerikano siya or Negro siya or Chinese siya. Then, hindi, hindi mo na sila itatrato ng pantay-pantay. Okay? Or not because Iglesia ni Cristo, Saksi ni Yehova, i-discriminate ng mga Katoliko or the other way around. Now, another example is if a relative of a politician is hired in the government, though another is much more qualified than him, we say that it is unfair. O oh, unfair naman. May mas qualified pero yung isa, kamag-anak ng politiko. It would be unfair na itong kamag-anak niya ang kinuha niya over the, the much more qualified. But in, in situations na, in, in other situations, uh, it can be na pwede. Especially kapag hindi siya mag-fall sa nepotism. Okay? In nepotism kasi class, okay, I'll give you just a background. Sa nepotism kasi, the appointing authority or the recommending authority should not be a relative by consanguinity, by blood, or by affinity, or by law, noong iya-appoint niya. For example, ako ang presidente ng Pilip... Ah, ako, ang, ako ang mayor, for example, the mayor of Kawayan City. May iya-appoint ako. At hindi naman sa confidential employee, inappoint ko yung pinsang buo ko, hindi pwede. Or inappoint ko yung asawa ng pinsang buo ko, hindi pa rin pwede. Kasi that would fall under the fourth degree, fourth civil degree of consanguinity sa pinsan ko at sa asawa niya by affinity. Okay? So sa national positions naman, third civil degree of consanguinity or affinity. But there are exceptions, but hindi na natin pag-uusapan yung exceptions because malilihis tayo ng, uh, ng, ng, ng topic. Okay? So, distributive justice, or we, we discuss about the kinds of justice, and we will discuss, I think, three. The first is distributive justice. It refers to the extent to which society's institutions ensure that benefits and burdens are distributed among society's members in ways that are fair and just when the institutions of a society distribute benefits or burdens in unjust ways, there is a strong presumption that those institutions should be changed. For example, in tong time, ngayong time ng pandemic, okay, a handful of ordinary citizens were arrested for violating the bayanihan mo. Ano itong mga to? Hindi nag-shield, nag, nag hindi nagmamask, nag-gather sila, walang social distancing. Okay, while a lot of government allies who are public officers were not charged, though they committed clear violations of the said law. Bakit ganun? Bakit hindi pare-parehas yung, 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 yung batas? Hindi pare-parehas na may pangil. Ang pangil ng batas ay eh, para lamang dun sa mga mahihirap. E eh, baano naman yung mga, nas, ng mga nakaupo sa government, yung mga nakatataas, na, nahuli ba sila? Parang wala, wala tayong nakitang nakasuhan o natiketan man lang. Or another is that a number of disqualified beneficiaries of the Social Amelioration Program or the SAP receive such benefits because of their close ties with the barangay officials or the DSWD officials. Disqualified na nga, mayaman na nga, nakakuha pa. O patay na nga, nakakuha pa. Paano ba naman yun, di ba? Samantalang yung mas nangangailangan, hindi sila nakakuha. So that would be an injustice. 
that would be unfair. Another, another kind is retributive justice. It refers to the extent to which punishments are fair and just. In general, punishments are held to be just to the extent that they take into account relevant criteria, such as the seriousness of the crime and the intent of the criminal and discount irrelevant criteria such as race. Now, example, it would be barbarously unjust to chop off a person's hand for stealing money. Wala, hindi, hindi ganun. Pag may nagdako ba, pinuputol ba yung kamay? Hindi, kinukulong. O pinagbabayad, dun sa ninakaw niya. Wala, wala ka, may kita na nagnakaw na pinutulan ng kamay. Okay? It would be bar it would be a, a barbaric style of punishment. No unang panahon may ganun, pero ngayon wala na. Or to impose a death penalty on a person who by accident and without negligence injured another party. Hindi niya naman sinasadya. Hindi naman aksidente lang nabangga niya, for example, isang tao. Ang, in, ang binigay mong punishment, death penalty, it would be unjust din naman doon sa tao na yun. Na aksidente na nga yung tao, na guilty na nga yung tao at nakapatay siya, nakabangga siya, papatayin mo pa siya. Yun nga, bibigyan mo pa siya ng death penalty. Here in the Philippines, we have the criminal laws that define crimes, treat of their nature, and provide provide for their punishment. These laws are for the purpose of receiving retributive justice of the side or on the side of the victim or the victim's family. Now, the last, the, the, the last one is compensatory justice. This refers to the extent to which people are fairly compensated for their injuries by those who have injured them. Just compensation is proportional to the loss inflicted on a person. O, kung may nawala sa'yo, kailangan mabayaran. Now, in the Philippine legal system, they are called damages. O, iba yung damage, uh, iba yung damage, damage na uh, sira sa sakin mo, that, that is damage. But you are now entitled to damages. The damage is uh, pertaining to your car, which has been damaged. But the damages is the one or what is accorded to you. Especially kapag nag-render na ng judgment. Okay, magbibigay ng damages. So the term damages was defined by the Supreme Court in the case of MEA Builders Incorporated versus Court of Appeals. That is GR number 121484, which is promulgated on January 31, 2005. Sabi dito, damages is the sum of money which the law awards or imposes as a pecuniary compensation, a recompense, or satisfaction for an injury done or a wrong sustained as a consequence either of a breach of a contractual obligation or a tortious act. Memorize this. Okay? Again, it is the sum of money which the law awards or imposes as a pecuniary compensation, a recompense, or a satisfaction for an injury done or a wrong sustained as a consequence either of a breach of a contractual obligation or a tortious act. Now, damages are categorized as ito, tinatawag natin mental, moral damages, exemplary or corrective damages, nominal damages, temperate damages or moderate, actual or compensatory or liquidated damages. Yung mental na tinatawag. Okay? Now, John Rawls. We discuss about John Rawls. One of my favorite philosophers ito, si John Rawls. Mamaya mag-discuss ako sa inyo after this yung pinaka-naalala ko sa kanya nung college pa lang ako. Now, the foundations of justice can be traced to the notions of social stability, interdependence, and equal dignity. As the ethicist John Rawls has pointed out that the stability of a society or any group for that matter depends upon the extent to which the members of the society feel that they are being treated justly. Now, when some of society's members come to feel that they are subject to unequal treatment, the foundations have been laid for social unrest, magkakaroon ng kaguluhan, disturbances, and strife. The members of a community roles holds depend on each other, and they will retain their social unity only to the extent that their institutions are just. Moreover, 
Kant and others have pointed out that human beings are all equal in this respect. So pantay-pantay lang ng tao. They all have the same dignity in virtue of and in virtue of this dignity, they deserve to be treated to be treated as equals. Whenever individuals are treated unequally on the basis of characteristics that are arbitrary and irrelevant, their fundamental human dignity is actually violated. Now, there are three most fundamental ideas which uh, uh, are enveloped in John Rawls' notion of justice. First, okay, I, this one is the public political culture of a democratic society uh, are... Uh, is, is that which the citizens are free, first free, equal, and that, and that society should be a fair system of cooperation. Again, okay, the three most fundamental ideas that Rawls finds in the public political culture of a democratic society are the citizens are one free, two equal, and that the society should be a fair system of cooperation. So all liberal political conceptions of justice will therefore be centered on interpretations of these three fundamental ideas. So the first one, a liberal political conception of justice will ascribe to all citizens familiar individual rights and liberties, such as rights of free expression, liberty of conscience, and free choice of occupation. So lahat tayo merong... Uh, uh, right to liberty. Okay. Now, a political conception will give special priority to these rights and liberties, especially over demands to further the general good. E.g., for example, to increase national wealth or perfectionist values, example, to promote a particular view of human flourishing. And lastly, a political conception will assure for all citizens Sufficient all-purpose means to make effective use of their freedoms. Now, Rawls says that these abstract features must be realized in certain kinds of institutions. He mentions several features that all societies are ordered by a liberal political conception will, uh, will share. One, fair opportunities for all citizens. Especially in education and training, dapat magkakaroon ng pagkakapantay-pantay ng opportunidad pag, patungkol dyan. Number two, a decent distribution of income and wealth. Na kung saan hindi lang nakafocus yung kayamanan sa isang grupo ng tao, kundi dapat pantay-pantay yan. Okay? Government, uh, third, government as the employer of the employer of last resort. Next, basic health care for all citizens. Okay? Oh. And lastly, public financing of elections. Now, Rawls' own conception of justice is that justice as fairness, ito yun, does qualify as a member of the family of liberal political conceptions of justice. The use of political power in a liberal society will be legitimate if it is employed in accordance with the principles of any liberal conception of justice, and that is justice as fairness. So let us talk about distributive justice. Ito, pinag-aralan natin ito kanina. So meron tatlo lang na i-discuss ko dito sa, tatlo or apat na i-discuss ko dito sa distributive justice. Principles of distributive justice are best thought of as providing moral guidance for the political processes and structures that affect the distribution of benefits and burdens in societies. Any principles which do offer this kind of moral guidance on distribution, regardless of the terminology they employ, should be considered principles of distributive justice. The first one is the radical equality or strict egalitarianism. So it says that every person should have the same level of material goods, including burdens and services. The principle is most commonly justified on the grounds that people are morally equal. And that equality in material goods and services is the best way to give effect to this moral idea. So kung ano ibibigay mo kay Juan, ibibigay mo din kay Jose. Kung ano ibibigay mo kay Jose, ibibigay mo din kay Pedro. 
Kasi pare-parehas naman sila na equal. Kung ano ibibigay mo sa akin, ibibigay ko din sa iyo. O ibibigay din sa iyo. Kung ang magkano sisingilin sa akin, ganun din na sisingilin sa iyo. Example, if one is given a pack of relief goods during the time of pandemic, then Pedro should also be given. Though he is a little richer than one. As citizens, both are entitled to the benefits the government gives since both are also burdened by the taxes they pay. In fact, ito nga si Pedro, dahil mas mayaman siya, may have a higher amount of taxes than one. Okay? Now, socialism is the next one. It is a system in which every person in the community has an equal share of the various elements of production. Such a form of ownership is granted through a democratic system of governance that can be demonstrated through a cooperative system in which each member of the society owns a share of communal resources. Socialists actually have deployed the ideals and principles of equality, democracy, individual freedom, self-realization, and community or solidarity. Regarding sa equality, they have proposed strong versions of the principle of equality of opportunity according to which everyone should have broadly equal access to the necessary material and social means to live flourishing lives. Dapat, in order for us to have flourishing life, in order for us to have decent lives, socialists will say na dapat pantay-pantay ang mga ibibigay. What one benefits, what one receives, Pedro should also receive. And Jose should also receive. Kung ano ang benefit ni Juan, dapat ganun din kay Pedro, ganun din dapat kay Jose. Now, socialists also embrace the ideal of democracy. Okay, the Philippines is a democratic country. Ha? So it is the rule of the majority. Now, uh, requiring the people have broadly equal access to the necessary means to participate meaningfully in decisions affecting their lives and the community as a whole. Many socialists say that democratic participation should be available not only at the level of the governmental institutions, but also in various economic arenas. Third, socialists are committed to the importance of individual freedom. Ganyan. So this commitment includes versions of the standard ideas of negative liberty and non-domination, which require security from inappropriate interference by others. But it also, typica but it also typically includes a more demanding, positive form of self-determination as the real freedom of being able to develop one's own projects and bring them to fruition or reality. Finally, and relatedly, socialists often affirm an idea of community or solidarity according to which people should organize their economic life so that they treat the freedom and well-being of others as intrinsically significant. People should recognize positive duties to support other people. So may komunidad, may solidarity, may pagkakaisa, may pagtutulong-tulong ang bawat isa dito sa socialist o sa socialism. Now, another principle is capitalism. Ito, ito na yung last na discuss ko sa inyo. And, and see, in, nung time kasi ni Karl Marx, okay, si Karl Marx, and capitalism involves certain relations. And these relations pertain to production or relations of production. These comprise certain forms of control over the productive forces. The labor power that workers deploy in production and the means of production such as natural resources, tools, and spaces they employ to yield goods and services. And certain social patterns and economic interaction that typically correlate with that control. Now here, the bulk of the means of production is privately owned. By whom? By the capitalist. And they are controlled by the capitalist. And so they can control, siyempre yung working class, the labor, the labor force. People or workers own their labor. Yun lang ang pag-aari ng mga tao, yung labor nila. Now finally, there is a class division or a class struggle between the capitalists and the workers. Na tinatawag ni Karl Marx, it is, this, this, is, this is the class struggle of the, the bourgeois and or the bourgeoisie and the proletarians. Now, by this class struggle, it can be gleaned that there is an unequal distribution of justice in a capitalist society because wealth is concentrated on the capitalist. Samantalang, yung mga nasa working class, hindi katiting man lang na yaman na nagigain 
ng kapitalista, hindi niya man lang ma-enjoy. So the capitalists, the capitalists get richer and richer and the workers just receive a small portion of the profits as their wage or salary and other benefits. For in for example, sa mga various companies, they profit billions of pesos each year. Bawat taon, magkano lang ang nakukuha ng mga ng, ng, ng mga tauhan nila. Their workers only receive a small fraction of money from the overall profits. Sabihin mo nang sumesweldo ka ng 100,000, maliit pa rin yan kumpara sa kinikita ng kapitalista. And by this, I, I am reminded of my former professor, talaga sobrang idol niya si Karl Marx. Ako saan sabi niya, masabihin na lang natin, yung mga, yung mga nagtatrabaho sa sa mga fast food chain, free ba yung pagkain nila? Ha? Hindi lahat nagbibigay ng free na pagkain. Okay. Sabi nga niya, meron daw isang kumpanya ng cellphone. Okay? O yung mga nagtitinda na, yung mga nagtitinda ng cellphone, hindi man lang nila ma- mabili yung mismong binebenta nila kasi masyadong mataas ang presyo compare sa salary na na-receive nila. So sino mas kumikita? Ang mga kapitalista. Kaya ang mga mayaman, lalong yung mayaman, yung mga mahirap, lalong nagihirap. Because there is this uh, class struggle. So in the song of Bamboo, yung Tatsulok, o dapat yung Tatsulok, babalik rin yung Tatsulok kasi yung nandun sa dulo ng Tatsulok, sila yung mga mayayap. Okay. So dapat mabalik na yung Tatsulok in order for yung yaman mapunta sa mas nakararami at yung hirap mapunta na lang sa mas kokorti. Yun yung principle ng um, itong caste, kapitalista. Now, so that would be it, class. Eh, na yung discussion natin about kay John Rawls eh, yung distributive justice niya. Actually, uh, sabi nila nung, nung when... I'll just stop sharing my screen. When I was in college, sabi nila, paano mo malalaman na hindi ka lulukuhin ng kasama mo pagdating sa hatian? Sabi nung professor ko, mayroong pizza. Kung may pizza, hatiin mo sa gitna. Kung sino yung naghati sa gitna, hindi siya ang unang mamimili, yung isa. In that way, magkakaroon ng justice. Bakit? Bakit daw? Kasi hahatiin mo na para alam mong hindi ikaw yung unang mamimili. Hahatiin mo talaga ng hating hati. Kasi kung mas malaki yung isang hati, yun ang pipiliin ng isa. At hindi mo yun pwedeng sabihin na akin ito. Kasi ikaw ang maghahati pero siya ang unang mamimili. When, I, when we were still kids, ganoon ang ginagawa sa Pansit Canton. Di ba? When we were still kids, uh, our parents will... Uh, will let us divide the Pansit Canton. And then kung sino nag-divide, hindi siya yung unang mamimili. Ang mamimili, yung kapatid ko. Kasi usually ako yung nag-divide. So, justice will require, or justice will tell me, or my conscience will tell me, dapat hatiin ko ng maayos. Bakit? Kasi ayaw ko makuha yung mas kakaunti. Kasi siya, ako maghahati, siya ako na mamimili. Okay? So, ganun siya. Yun yung pinaka naalala ko sa discussion namin about John Rawls. And class, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask me. And uh, hanggang sa muli, ako uh, inyong kapilo, si Sir Christian Gonzalez. And again, uh, this uh, lecture video will, is also uh, open to all students of ethics. So bye-bye class and God bless to all of you.